Are we live? Are we ready? It's Garage Band Weekly, 88 miles per hour. Let's do it. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa. Oh yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Garage Band Weekly. If it's your first time here, my name's Pete, and this is our show all about this thing here, or uh, this thing here, whatever type of garage band you're rocking, uh, we'll be talking about it. And uh, today on the show, we'll be talking about Garage Band Mac to no iOS to Mac and back. Can we do this? Can we work a project across two different platforms? We're about to find out. We're going to be looking at voice memos. Is it really as good or as bad as we remember? And are there some cool new features in the newer version that can actually help us with our recordings? Yeah, maybe. And uh, we've got some updates to our updates in GarageBand, which is a bit weird. We'll be explaining all of that in just a few minutes. But uh, welcome aboard. I hope you're well. We are here a day late, but not a buck short. Sorry, I always say that. It's never, it's never been a funny joke, but there's a um, Blink-182 song that's like a day late and a buck short. I'm writing the report. You know the one, surely. Yeah? Anyone with me here? Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, let's dive into the news and notes, shall we, from the last week. And the first thing I want to talk about here is that we had some new updates to our updates. So if you've uh, been around the channel in the last couple of weeks, you would realise that there's been a whole bunch of these new packs that they've released, these ones here. And we got some weirdness through the week where we had these little update icons on the packs and we all got a little bit excited and went, oh, does this mean that we've got some, uh, some brand new stuff here, some new additions to our new additions? Well, it turns out, no, not really. And uh, I'll explain here. This man here, Patrick, over at the Garage Band Guy, did the sleuthing. He went and actually got in touch with Apple and actually asked them, what the actual, what's going on here? Do we actually have any new stuff? And the short answer is, no, we don't. But the longer answer is, yeah, we do. And in fact, we're going to be testing this out later in the show because what's actually happened and the reason that we have these new things in here at all, if we jump over to our iPad, the reason that we have these updates in here is nothing to do with iOS, but it's everything to do with Mac. So the sound library here, I've still got updates to do for some reason. I, th I thought I'd updated everything. <laughs> I think it's just still got the new in there. But the reason is that a lot of these packs, so we have the Mark Ronson pack and a few of these other packs, they have now been tweaked so that they are compatible with GarageBand on Mac. Now, this is important because if you transfer a GarageBand iOS project to Mac and you're using loops and you're using sounds and samples that are in these packs, these ones here, the new artist and producer packs, they weren't working. Now, because I don't use Mac a whole lot, I didn't really know that. I didn't know that they weren't working until uh, Patrick told me. So we're going to actually test that out. I've got a, a track that I've created here. This this one that, uh, that we're in here right now. This is the track that I did when we looked at the Mark Ronson Watch the Sound Pack. So this has got a whole bunch. It's using all the different effects, all the different key sounds, and all the different loops from the Watch the Sound Pack. So hang around. Yeah, this is a tease. You're going to have to hang around because later in the show, I'm going to be sending this project or opening this project up in GarageBand on Mac, which I have. Here's one I prepared earlier, if we just tab over to it. Uh, oh, man. I'm, I'm still getting my hang, hang around to bring stuff up. There we go. Uh, so we're here in GarageBand Mac. We will open it up in GarageBand on Mac and we will have a crack at uh, seeing how this actually works because it's pretty cool. The bad news by definition there is that the other sound library packs that haven't been updated, we don't actually have. So, yeah, we we don't have things like the Mark Letary pack, I think, is one of them. The Boys Noise, the Tom Mish, these other ones, they haven't actually been updated yet, which means that if you create a project in iOS and you transfer it over to GarageBand, you won't have those come across. And maybe we'll even try that too. Maybe while we're testing things out, we'll try that as well. That could be an interesting thing to take a bit of a look at. Alrighty, uh, what else do we have in the news and notes here? Oh, sorry, I've got to get my uh, my notes up here. I was running a little bit behind here today. Uh, we are a day late here, and uh, the reason for that is that I had uh, had an important appointment appointment uh, yesterday. Uh, so I'm a member of the uh, what I like to call the Double Poke Club now, <laughs> which uh, 
I don't know why I call it that. Uh, so yes, I had my second, my second shot, my second jab, as we say here in Australia. And uh, yeah, uh, all I'm going to say is that uh, it's the least that I could do. Uh, and a shout out to all the doctors, nurses, clinical people, contact tracers, uh, police, uh, ambos, everyone that's doing a lot, lot of work because of this stupid C word. Um, and I figured the least I can do is actually go and uh, stand in line for 10 minutes and uh, get a small prick in my arm. Uh, pause for edit and we'll back on track. So uh, the number two thing I wanted to talk about this week and uh, our friend Thomas Christ, who's right here in the building, has talked, uh, uh, gave me this. He gave me uh, a, a, a he gave me a a thing. There you go. Uh, he gave me. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Rangers jersey already. Football's just starting here. Yeah, no, um, I know. I meant to take this off before I started. I'm wearing my Distro Kids shirt underneath, and I was running late, so I forgot. So Thomas Christ sent me a photo yesterday, and I'm like, oh, Thomas is sending me a photo. This is a bit odd, but he sent me this photo, and uh, it's something pretty cool. And I wanted to bring it up here in the news and notes because. Whilst it's not news, it's news to me. And I figured if it's news to me, and I know a reasonable amount about GarageBand, it's probably news to you too. And that is, what does the auto-normalization, auto-limiting, auto-mastering process that GarageBand on iOS does, what does it actually do? It's always been a secret formula, the secret source of GarageBand. And uh, Thomas has kind of cracked the code, and he's done that by doing this. He's brought it here into Logic. So, excuse me, I'm getting so excited that uh, I'm getting a bit choked up about things. So, uh, this, is, this is logic, and what Thomas has done is he's brought in a GarageBand iOS project right here into logic, and taken a look at what it actually puts on the master bus. Now, GarageBand Mac has a master bus, but it doesn't show up any of these things. If you bring the same project into GarageBand Mac, and I'm pretty sure of this because these are all sort of logic-based processes, they're not going to show up. But here in Logic, it does actually show up. And what you notice here is that there are three things that are applied to the stereo out or the master bus here. You've got the channel EQ, and Thomas has speculated, and I think he's right, that this is the EQ, the visual EQ, that is part of that FX that you can add. So you know how you can add the FX and then you can basically use the EQ on that track and then you can turn the gain up and down? We're thinking this might relate to that. We've also got a limiter, which is not surprising. So the limiter is exactly what we thought, which limits the volume. It's basically a brick wall limiter. So it'll auto normalize everything up to zero dB or, and this is why I say to people to be careful, it will actually crush it down to zero dB. If you've gone over, if you're too loud, it will bring all your levels down to zero dB. So that's why you need to keep your volumes low in GarageBand iOS. But it's also using the multi-presser, which is a multi-band compressor. Now, as you can see here, it doesn't seem to have anything on any of these. So this is the weird thing. We don't know if this just means that when you bring it into Logic, it just resets all of these and it doesn't actually do the processing algorithm that it does out of iOS, or what it actually, or whether you put a different track in here that is overblown, maybe suddenly these settings start changing. So, uh, Thomas, you're on the case. This is your job. If you choose to accept it, your goal <laughs> is for the next, uh, over the next week, hopefully Thomas and anyone else who's a Logic user, if you want to do some sleuthing like Thomas and uh, check it out by bringing GarageBand iOS projects into Logic, maybe bring a really loud one in, a really quiet one in, and see if you can actually see what the changes are made here on the master track. It may be, as I said, that it shows nothing and all of these remain blank and they're just there because that's what it's using. And it could be completely unrelated. It could just be that these are just default things that it puts on there in Logic because it's what you generally use on a master track. We don't know, but I love a bit of speculation. So um, let's find out, shall we? Let's put the, uh, the Studio Live Today community out there to work and uh, see, uh, see what we can find out. All right, quick coffee and then we'll move on. All righty, we'll, uh, we'll get rid of that one there. We'll come back over here to our garage band that we need to because it is time to talk about, uh, and because, because this is our Back to the Future episode, episode 88, 88 miles per hour, I wanted to see if we can go from GarageBand iOS to Mac and back and how that all works here because I'm an absolute novice in GarageBand Mac and instead of testing this all out beforehand, I thought, let's just try it. Let's have a bit of an experiment with this and see how we go. So what have we got? We have a GarageBand iOS project. This is the project I did with the Mark Ronson pack. Let's just take a quick listen to it. Funky, yeah. Rolling down the street at 17 
So you may remember this one from a couple of weeks back when we took a look at this pack for the first time. So what I want to do, this has got a whole bunch of stuff on here. We've got uh, all sorts of different loops and samples and things. The majority of them are from the Watch the Sound pack, which as we now know from the intro has been updated to now be compatible with Mac. So <laughs> let's give it a crack, shall we? So what we need to do is, Siri, didn't talk to you, is save out of there. There you go. We've saved out. Watch the sound demo two. This is the one that we're going to be using. So this is saved in my tutorial songs folder here in my GarageBand for iOS folder. So that's where we need to go because all these are on iCloud Drive. This is why iCloud Drive is important. Important to save your stuff here on iCloud Drive. It just makes it easier when you're trying to do something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab, uh, grab our Mac version. Boom. There we go. And what we can actually do. If you weren't aware, you can open a GarageBand project. We're going to close this one first just to give ourselves uh, some blank space here. We can actually open a GarageBand project, an iOS project here in GarageBand on Mac. So what we're going to do is we are, oh, we're going to open existing project down the bottom here. We're going to click on that one and we're going to go to our iCloud drive. We're going to go to GarageBand for iOS. Well, let's do this in, uh, where's our alphabetical order? I don't want previous 30 days. I'm still still getting my head around all of this. Why can't I just sort by, sort by name? All right, that's better. <sighs> GarageBand iOS. It is in tutorial songs and it is, uh, are we still, again, why, why, why is it reset yet yeah, by name? Okay. Is that really by name though? doesn't look like it. Watch the sound demo too. So here's the one. It took us a while, but we got there. So this is the one we want. What we're going to do is hit the open button there. This is an iOS project, but what it'll do, it'll come in here and it will open this one. Uh, in fact, it'll, it wants us to save it as here. So it wants us to save it because it has to convert it to a Mac project. So I'll do that. But again, I like using, and I've got to work out how to do this to set this as my default. I'm going to use this GarageBand for Mac folder here on iCloud Drive, just so that I can keep things all on my iCloud Drive for backup purposes. All right. The plugin named Rough Rider 3 isn't available for your system and the plugin named Wider. Okay, so there are a couple of things I did here. I must have put Rough Rider 3 and I must have put Wider on here, which are AUV3 plugins in iOS. These won't work in Mac. So it's telling me that. That's cool. We'll continue. We can continue without them. Some additional content is needed for this project. Do you want to download it now? Well, you know I do. So we'll hit the download button and what this will do, it'll go away. And I've never done this before. Uh, looks like there's a progress bar at the top there a download bar. This should be downloading the Watch the Sound Pack into my loops in my GarageBand for Mac. There it goes. It wants a password to, to download these. Uh, this is for, for the Apple stuff. So I'm going to flick away here for just a moment. Hopefully there's no mirrors reflecting my keys while I type in my password. Now you, you know the approximate number of, uh, of letters and numbers in my password. And characters. Maybe there's weird foreign characters here. So up in the top corner, I've got that you can't see here. It says, sounds for Watch the Sound Demo 3 were successfully installed. A little GarageBand notification that popped up. And if we come on over, back over to here, you'll see that we are all good to go. Uh, it's giving me this error again here. So we'll go, okay, we'll continue with that. And now we should be good to go. So if I've done everything correctly, what we should find is that this project will now sound, yes, we get it. They're not there. We understand. <laughs> Why does it keep loading it over again and again? All right. So we should be good to go here. We should have this entire project here. So drum roll, please. We'll turn up the volume on the Mac and hit play. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Rolling and I don't even know the words. <laughs> All right, so that is good. It's it, By default, it's put this loop thing on, so we'll take that off. Uh, so, so that's all cool. And all these things are actually in here. So these loops were not part of GarageBand Mac. They had to actually be downloaded. These keys were not part of GarageBand Mac. They had to be downloaded. Uh, so all of the different sounds that we had in here and the beats and the beat sequencer and the drum kits, they're all there. Uh, yeah, I know, Greg, you can get the, the password from the keystroke sounds, exactly. No, I'm using I'm using the Logitech Sleuth keyboard that doesn't actually uh, doesn't actually give you all the sounds. <laughs> it was funny, like the old touch tone phones where it, like every tone would have a different beep and you'd hear like the boo, 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 and you could like decipher what people People are typing in. Yeah, that didn't go well for some of the early stuff. There were people that were like recording people punching in their credit card number on touchtone phones and getting the numbers. Yay! No, hopefully we don't have that these days. 
but I am always paranoid about like mirrors and things because uh, I've seen people do that before where they're not realizing that there's a reflection that's showing something. Like when you're playing poker and you can see other people's cards. All right, let's, uh, <laughs> getting way off track here. So we'll zoom in on this one just so that we can see our whole track. There it is in all of its glory. And uh, that's done. So here's the challenge. We wanted to see if we can now bring this on back to iOS. Now, I'll give you the spoiler on this. We can't, not directly, but we kind of can. And there's a way that we kind of can that I'm going to show you here now. So what we can do, and this is uh, only the second time I've ever done this, so please bear with me while I stumble my way through it. So we go to file. We can actually save this as, uh, save as, we can save this as a garage band. I, oh, no, you, sorry, it's not that one. You've got to do it separately. I think it's in the export, actually. I think it's in the share. There we go. Share project. Here it is, share project to GarageBand for iOS. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna share it to GarageBand for iOS. And again, because we've got our folder structure here all working well, we're gonna go back to GarageBand for iOS, we're gonna go back to that tutorial songs folder, and we're gonna call it Watch the Sound Demo, and just so that I know what I'm doing here, we're gonna say From Mac. So we're gonna call it Tutorial Songs, Watch the Sound Demo From Mac. We're gonna hit Save. So this is saved and exported this. Keep this in mind, this version, the Watch the Sound Demo 3, that's on our GarageBand for Mac folder, now becomes the, the link project. This now becomes the project that we need to use from here on in. And this is one of the limitations. We're not now going to be able to send it back to iOS and then use iOS as our main platform for mixing and mastering and doing all that sort of stuff. So once you go Mac, you can really never go back. You kind of can. So there's a dog barking out there, I'm like. Is that my dog? No, he's asleep under the desk. That's okay. Uh, once you go back, you can never go back, but you kind of can. And that's what we're going to show you here. So let's minimize that one here to reveal our iPad hiding in here behind. Now, if we go back into this tutorial songs folder, uh, we should be able to find the new one in here. Here it is. Watch the sound demo from Mac. Now it's downloading at the moment and you might already notice here that it's only 1.1 megabytes. That's weird. We'll tap on this one. You'll see in a moment why it's only 1.1 megabytes because once it downloads and opens, yeah, she's a stereo file, <laughs> right? Stereo file. So uh, when we play this here, it'll play fine. Yeah. No problem at all. Stereo file though. So it's not really gonna help us out here in terms of adding things or is it? Dun, dun, dun. All right, now, because we know that we've had some of these other packs updated, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add, add here, we're gonna go, now, which, which one was it that got updated? Was it the, uh, was it the take, a, take a day trip? I hope it was. What we'll do is we'll try and add some sounds from some different packs here. One that we think is in there and one that's not. So if we go to the take a day trip sound pack here, uh, yeah, I think that was one that was updated. So what I'm gonna do is add in, let's just add in a random keyboard sound. And we'll go to recently downloaded. We'll go to the take a day trip. And we'll just find another sound. Let's just grab whatever this is, the Route 22 reverberation synth. Yeah, that this might actually work. What, a, what key did we play this in? For some reason it was in B. So let's just uh, record something here in. We'll do this, one, two, three, four. There you go. So that has recorded in there, right? Route 22 reverberation synth from this particular pack. Let's now choose another sound from a pack that doesn't have this compatibility. Now this is all new to me, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. Let's just use a uh, an effects here from the Tank tank Girl. I keep calling it Tank Girl, from the Track Girl pack. We'll use the uh, Heavenly Voices Choir. We'll just uh, use it, that just to put a little bit of a, an effect in here. So that's all we need to do. Just put the one little stab in there just so that we know that there's something in there. So we've added these in here. Now, at this point, I'm, I'm a bit nervous because I don't really know what's going to happen when one's compatible and one's not. But you and me, we're going to find out together. So <laughs> what we need to do is save out of this project. We're going to save out and that saves this one into this Watch the Sound demo on Mac. Now, notice it's got the cloud icon there. That means it's pushing it back up into the cloud. And once that goes away, it means it's completely done. And then we can go back to Mac and actually check it out. There you go, it's uploaded. The size is bigger now. We can tell that all is good in the world. 
but is it? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop doing that now. <laughs> Let's go back to Garage Van Mac. Uh, and what we're going to do <clears throat> is uh, we'll close out of this project to start with. So we'll go just to the file and we'll close just to make sure that everything is all hunky-dory. We're going to save the Watch the Sound Demo 3. If we go back to open existing project, now this is where I got tripped up last time I showed this, is that I went and found the iOS project and tried to open that one here in Mac. But what we actually need to do is open this. But wait, there's more. Can you see here it's downloading? Uh, is that downloading or uploading? Maybe it's uploading. We'll, we'll probably need to wait for this. But if we open it now, it might ask us to wait. So if we hit the open button on that one now, it's going to download it. Yet those plugins are still in there that shouldn't be. And look at this. New tracks have been added to this project by GarageBand iOS. Do you want to import the new tracks? Yes, drum roll please. Do you want to import the new tracks? I do. Let's see if they work. Sampler instrument Route 22 Revelation Synth not found. Now that was one from the from the Take a Day Trip pack. So that's not found. Changes are imported successfully. Uh, share to GarageBand iOS again to edit the project further. So here's the thing. Now that it's back in Mac, we need to reshare it if we want to do more. So we can't now go back to that iOS project. The iOS project just is kind of like a placeholder for adding things in. Here we go. Some additional content is needed. Do you want to download it now? Let's download it. Let's see what this does. This is all fascinating. So this is interesting to me. And look, you're watching a show called GarageBand Users. So hopefully it's interesting to you as well to see what this actually does. There's our progress bar at the top. Now I've got a message up over here. It's just the plugins again. I should remove them. I'm going to get that every time. So what have we got here? All right, we've got the Heavenly Voices Choir and we've got the, the Route 22 Revelation Synth. Yes, the plugins aren't supported. So both of them seem to be here. This is interesting. Um, we'll turn the volume back up and we'll just solo these two because I thought... Is that the right sound? Yeah, I think so. Um, and we definitely had that... Uh, man in it. So it was the, the Track Girl one was the one that we thought we thought wasn't going to come in here because I thought it wasn't actually updated. So that's weird. Or maybe I got it wrong. Maybe we need to go and, uh, and just play around with some more sounds. Uh, where, where was the image that I had? I know where it was. It was here on my, uh, in my photos here. I have the thumbnail for which ones were actually updated and I'll just double check on that one. Uh, so it was, yeah, no, it was Take a Day Trip, Oakfelder, Selection and the Mark Ronson pack. So we've 100% used a, a sound that was in here. Now, this is an alchemy synth sound. So maybe it's actually related to the the actual uh, loops. So maybe we need to find a loop that was in another pack. So we know the Mark Letary pack hasn't been updated, right? So a Mark Letary pack happens to be one of my favorite packs. So let's see if we can actually use that here in GarageBand instead. So what we're going to do, we need to, this is where it gets a bit fiddly because we need to reshare this. Yeah, we need to export this project again. Project to GarageBand for iOS. We need to save it on our iCloud drive in our iOS folder. We'll put it back in tutorial songs and we'll call it Watch the Sound Demo from Mac 2. And then we know that this is going to be the one that we want to use. So we'll hit save. It's going to export it out and it's going to save that as a GarageBand for iOS project. Hello to the folks who've dropped in, by the way. Hello to uh, to Jim and to, to Clayton and to, to uh, uh, Jade Star and to all the other folks who are here. Mark, thank you for all for being here. So that's exported now. What we'll do is we'll close out of that just again so we don't get confusion going on here. Yeah, we'll save, the, we'll save that version. We'll jump back into the background here. Boop, pop over here and we'll go back to GarageBand for iOS. So let's open up. We're here in tutorial songs. We should be able to find the latest version of this now. This one here, watch the sound demo for Mac 2. It'll download it. We'll have a quick coffee break. And it's back in here again. Oh, wait, <laughs> you know what I did? I left those soloed. I left those soloed. So this time around, let's just add a bunch of stuff. Let's just go nuts with this. So we'll go into the loops here. We'll uh, filter these by the sound packs. We'll, we'll use um, a sound pack that we know is definitely not updated, which is the Mark Letary. Where are you, Mark? Come to me. There you are. By the way, this one has some wicked sounds. Uh, you want to check this one out. Yep, all loops, filter, Apple loops, back to here, and then bring in one of these. So let's uh, let's go with the... Oh, hang on. Why do we have, why do we have everything? Multiple. No, we don't want multiple. We just want Mark Letary. Get rid of Take a Day Trip and just Mark Letary. There we go. Now we've got all these delicious. Uh, let's go with something cool. 
Yeah, let's go with some chords. These aren't going to be in the right key or anything, but we'll just throw that in there. While we're here, let's just grab another pack that we know is not in there, because I'm just intrigued by this. It seems like maybe behind the scenes, they've actually updated all of these, or maybe only those ones were not updated originally. Again, I, I like this. We're doing some investigative journalism here today. Let's go to the Tom Mersch pack, because that one definitely hasn't had an update since the first one, and we'll just grab the bone dry break. And we'll bring these in. So now we've changed this song completely. That almost sits in the groove. Doesn't quite. So that's added in there. This will do the same thing that it did before. So we're going to save out of this one. There you go. So it's saved in this version from the Mac version. It'll upload to iCloud Drive. And then again, as we go back to Mac, go back, back to the Mac, it will uh, be allow us to open up this project. So if we open existing project again, and uh, where are you? Where'd, where'd, you where'd, where'd it go? There we go. <laughs> so we open up this Watch the Sound Demo 3. What we should find is it'll give us this notification again to say, hey, you, you imported some new stuff. Ooh, see again, it's saying, oh, you know what? Sampler instrument not found. Maybe it's using a different instrument. Maybe. New tracks have been added. Let's import them. Uh, import successful. Uh, yes, we need to download the content. So now here it's going to go ahead and download the content. And what I should really do and what I recommend you do is go through each pack and add one loop or sound from each pack and then bring them into GarageBand Mac and then you'll get all the sounds there. Because here it's asking us for additional content again. We're going to hit download and it's going to download some more content. There it goes. The plugins are still not there. So maybe it's, it's grabbed that synth now because that was one of the things. It's not giving us that error anymore. It's just the plugin errors. So this should all be good. So now we've got these in here. And is this going to bring in these correct ones? Yeah, we get you. We know. Plugins are not there. They look good. Let's solo them and let's play this track over here. There you go. So I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss here because... I think Patrick was right, but I think it was probably that, because uh, again, Patrick's only going based on what Apple told him, but it looks as if all of these packs have the ability to be brought into GarageBand Mac. I'll need to do some more testing. We won't do it all here today because that's probably enough for that, but hopefully you'll learn a couple of things here. That is that, uh, number one, you can go from iOS to Mac and then back to iOS and then back to Mac. But there's a few little things you have to uh, keep in mind with that, that you can get the iOS sound packs, including the uh, patches for your keyboards, the audio presets and the loops over into Mac. But again, a few things that you have to keep in mind with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, for whatever reason, it seems that all the others may have already been working. It's just those th maybe those four packs weren't working and the update was to make them work. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right, we are going to move on from there and we're going to go on a bit of a rant because it is time for the rant of the week. I need sound bites, really, don't I? I need to start to incorporating some sounds where I just go, and time for the rant of the week. Um, before we do that, though, if you do have any questions, I didn't say this earlier on and I totally should have. I'm a little bit, still a little bit spacey. I'm totally fine after the uh, after the jab yesterday, except that um, I've been really tired. I slept about 12 hours last night, so I'm actually super energized this morning, but I've also found I'm just a little bit vague. It's probably the additional 5G um, coverage that's that's now been afforded to me that's uh, doing that. Uh, but if you do have a question, please just put the word question at the start of your comment and I'll know it's a question and then I'll answer it because straight after the rant, we will uh, close off the search survey. By the way, I didn't even tell you that. If you're here on YouTube Live, there's a survey asking you what platform you use GarageBand on the most. So we'll be closing off the survey, taking a look at that and uh, answering any of your questions. So if you've got any questions for the Q&A, start throwing them in there now. Right. There must be something in the water because I've been ranting on this stuff. I made a video about this during the week. Patrick from the GarageBand Guide, he made a video about this during the week. It is about copyright claims and content ID. Now, I want to say a few things about copyright claims and content ID. First of all, go and check out Patrick's video. If you're not subscribed to the GarageBand Guide, you should. Look, he's nearly got 100,000 subscribers. If 100,000 people think he's good, then you should too. But Patrick's latest video here... I'm getting there you go. Sorry, I didn't realize I had the sound on. Uh, so Patrick's latest video there, I'll just, I'll just leave that there. Hi, Patrick. Hello. See, we look the same. See? We've been working on the same Patrick faces too. I just need the glasses. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be the same person. <laughs> I'm getting off track. So Patrick and I have both been talking about this stuff. 
Here's the deal. When it comes to GarageBand specifically, there's some things you need to keep in mind. And again, go watch Patrick's video. He explains all of this. But to break it down, Content ID in YouTube, when you release a song using DistroKid or Muse or CD Baby or TuneCore, whoever it is, there is usually an option. It's usually extra. You usually have to pay for it to release it to YouTube as Content ID. What happens then is if you choose, and remember, you choose, so I don't want to hear anyone saying, oh, I got in trouble because of Content ID, but I didn't choose it. No, no. When you release it, you choose it. So you choose Content ID. It goes out to all the platforms. When it goes to YouTube, what YouTube do is that they take a snapshot. They go through and they sample your song, and then they put it into their Content ID database. Every time anyone plays that song, then it gets flagged. And when it gets flagged, what it does is it raises something called a copyright claim on that video. So for instance, if I grab a video of someone, and this happens every week on YML, I do a show called Your Music Live, as many of you know, every week on YML, I play songs. And every week I get anywhere between six and seven to 10 copyright claims because some people whose music I play choose to add content ID. Now, I don't have any problem with that at all. If you have a song and you wanna make sure that when someone else plays it in a video on YouTube, that you get some revenue from that, more power to you. What I will say is that it does cost you. So for uh, DistroKid, for example, it's like $4.99 per year to have Content ID on. And I don't know too many people in the uh, independent music space, and sorry to be the bearer of bad news, that have their music used so much in videos that they're, the person monetizing those videos, because here's the thing, not only does it have to be used in a video, that video creator has to be part of the YouTube content creator program. So they have to actually be monetizing the video. They have to get enough views to make enough ad revenue for it to actually be substantial that's actually going to you. All of these things, all of these factors add up to the fact that very rarely, unless your video is used by like Mr. Beast, but you know what? Creators like Mr. Beast, they know not to use copyright content. They are going to use the copyright free music in their videos. So it's a, it's a slippery slope in my, in my opinion. It's a protection against the fact that someone may have a really popular video and they use your song in it and then they make a million dollars and then you're left in the poor house. That's, that's, what, that's the fear factor. I think that's the FOMO factor that people have with Content ID. The reality factor is it is highly unlikely that anyone's going to use your song at all. And if they do use your song, it's probably going to be you. You're probably going to get copyright claims on your own videos using your own music, which is frustrating. I mean, you get the money back eventually, but it's still frustrating. It takes three months instead of like straight away. And it, I don't know, it, the whole thing just seems a little bit weird to me. So I say all of that to say, consider it carefully. If you want to do it, do it. But there are better ways to, to protect your music and to promote your music even. And I would even argue to the point that, especially if you're being played on other people's shows and other people's channels, there are shows that simply won't play your song if it's going to generate a copyright claim on their show or on their video. So if you want more coverage and if you want more exposure for your music, I would recommend not putting Content ID on because the 24 cents you may make a year, and don't forget you're paying five bucks a year for it, <laughs> the, the few cents you may make are not gonna be worth the additional exposure you could get by simply leaving it off. How does it relate to GarageBand? Because that was a big rant, but it didn't really have anything to do with GarageBand. Well, the one thing you need to be careful of in GarageBand, and Patrick outlines it really beautifully in his video, so go and watch that. But the thing to keep in mind is that when you're using GarageBand loops, when you're using GarageBand sounds, when you're using GarageBand presets, change them up. I've said this a million times, but reverse your loops, change the key, change the tempo, chop them, do all those different things. Add in your own sounds. I had a question this week from someone that said, I've got a, a GarageBand track that's just all loops and I want to release it and put Content ID on it. And I said, I would strongly advise against that for a couple of reasons. Number one is, yeah, it's a slippery slope because you're not actually creating any content. You're just reusing stuff that's already there. There's no creative input. Uh, and number two, if someone else has used that exact combination of loops and have released it and have put Content ID on theirs, guess what? You're going to get a Content ID claim on that. So when you start a song, make sure that you're not, and never use one loop at a time. Never use one loop or sample at a time, because if you do that, then there's almost definitely someone else that has released a song with that. So especially for bass loops and drum loops, and especially those loops in GarageBand, they're like a whole beat that have got like drums and bass. I've seen so many people, the first four bars of their song is just a drum and bass loop going. And if you then grab that drum and bass loop and incorporate that in any part of your song, it's gonna flag that. 
It's not the way it's intended to be. And I've got other thoughts on YouTube content ID and copyright in general. If you want to learn about them, check out the uh, video. If you search my name, Pete John's Content ID, there's about seven videos here on the channel that has uh, that can help you out. Uh, there you go. Uh, Mark says, uh, $5 plus 20% 20 20 for the revenue for Content ID. I made 96 cents with my song so far. Not worth it for sure. Yeah, and, and that's that's exactly it. That, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, exactly right. And and Jay's got a really good point here. You can always add it later. You can always add it after the fact. And this is frustrating for creators because I get content ID claimed from people that had a song that I played on YML two years ago, or a year ago. It hasn't been going two years, but a year ago, I could get a claim for that right now because they own the they own the song. They have every right to add content ID to it. And as soon as they do, and as soon as it gets updated into the YouTube database, YouTube will scan previous videos and they'll go, that person used that song, copyright claim, and it comes my way. It sounds worse than it is, but yeah, it, it, it's a thing to consider. Uh, but, but yeah, content ID really makes no sense unless you're a famous pop musician or something, in my opinion. And that's my opinion too. Again, you do you, and if you want, here's the thing. We're going to talk about this a lot in Songtember. By the way, if you're new to the channel, Songtember is our Song in a Month challenge that we'll be doing next month in September. So from the 1st to the 30th of September, I'll be creating a song, start to finish, writing, recording, editing, mixing, mastering, releasing in that 30 days, and I encourage you to do the same. The rules are as simple as that. Any genre, any platform, any type of music, any way you want to do it. If you want to get to the end of the month and you've got a demo recording on your iPhone, I don't care. But the point here is to finish something, to have an end result and have a creation that you can then share and be done with by the end of the month. It's very cathartic. It's very much fun. We'll talk a lot about this sort of stuff as well because my my copyright strategy is what I call hide in plain sight. So you may have seen about a week ago, I came up with an idea. Let, uh, we'll... Sorry, there's going to be a long one here today because <laughs> I get passionate about these things. But if uh, if you take if if you've been following the channel here, um, I'll just go to my recent videos here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, where am I? My studio. So what? About a week ago, I came up with a nice little ditty that I thought was kind of cool, and I've got a demo of it. Now, what a lot of people would do at this point is that they would quickly rush to get the, the lyrics, they'd go to their copyright office in their country of choice, and they'd copyright it, and then they'd make sure they hide it and not share it with anyone. I go the opposite way. I figure that if I hide in plain sight, it's going to be very difficult for any mofo to come and come at me after the case because I've already got it released here. So this is what I did. I just threw this up here. This is my um, my new song called Everybody. Everybody's got a little sin Lives underneath their skin So what I did is I just released me, a demo video of me playing this song and shared it publicly. It's got the lyrics there. It's got the music because it's actually there. So I now own that copyright because I have written a song. And this is the way it works in Australia. It's the way it works in most countries. If you are a songwriter and you write a song, you own that song. So now, if anyone plays this song, sometimes you don't even notice. So suddenly um, Ed Sheeran comes out with this song and it's the exact same chord progression, the same lyrics. Well, guess what? I can say, look, Ed, I got a timestamp of August 17th, 2021. I wrote this before you did, Sunshine. And he might say, yeah, but I actually wrote it before you and I just didn't release it. And then you get into a big legal battle. So it's not going to protect you 100%. But it's just such a better way, in my opinion, because I'm spending no time doing all this chasing around. I'm spending no time worrying about other people stealing my stuff because... There's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, people are probably not going to steal your stuff. They, go, they, they can buy, they, they can pay people. If they're, if they're big enough, they'll pay people to write songs for them. There's amazing professional songwriters that people pay to write songs. And number two is if, if something happens to your song, it's, you got more. You got more songs in you. I know it would suck. How much would it suck to have your song? What if someone went out and made a million dollars using one of your songs or an idea from your song? But doesn't that mean you're an amazing songwriter? and you can go and write another one. If you write a song that's good enough to do that, it's not gonna be a one hit thing. I know that we have this whole uh, 15 minutes of fame, one hit wonder thing, but if you're a talented songwriter and you write a hook that someone loves and they try to steal it, guess what? You're probably a good songwriter. You're gonna go write more. There you go, uh, exactly. That's, that's the way I go, hide in plain sight. Just release the song as many places as you can and uh, it's hard to argue against. the the. Look, there's ways to fluff around that and there's ways to spoof that, but it's really hard when it's on YouTube with a timestamp. It's really hard to do that. I know, Thomas, you do the same. You release a song, you stick it on YouTube with a video, and it's out there. It's good to go. 
Uh, righty. Uh, I think we'll move on there. Hello to Brad Example. Hello, Patrick Chandler. Hello, other folks. Uh, DJ Normal Norman. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, but we are going to move on here because I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, by the way, do we have any questions? I, don't, I didn't see any questions, which is very good. Uh, if you do have any questions, though, please let me know. Hello, Tom and Co., one of my wonderful patrons. Shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. You're all awesome. Thank you for being amazing. Uh, I mentioned it on previous shows, but I've been... Um, it's been one year since I was told by my previous employer that they no longer require my services. So I'm kind of having this bit of a, a bit of a celebration at the moment. I, I listened to my song called Lucky, which was all about like traveling for work and the anxiety that you get when you're in this corporate environment. And I watch that now, the same way that I watch Office Space now. I used to watch that as like a, a coping mechanism, like a way to go, yes, I know this is what it's actually like. And now it's like a parody. Now I just look at it and go, ah. So, uh, yeah, once again, I thank you. I thank you a lot. Uh, Brad Example says, I only know one person that had a song stolen. It was a disaster, but all worked out in the end. And that's the thing. It'll, it'll generally all, if you're worrying about things, it'll generally all work out in the end, at the end of the day. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going on. Uh, yeah, and as you say, Jalen, spot on. Life does not have to be perfect to be wonderful. And it won't be perfect. This show's not perfect. My music's not perfect. Uh, nothing is perfect. Speaking of not perfect, before we jump into uh, our plugin, uh, what are we doing? We're doing the plugin or app of the week. Yeah. Before we jump into that, uh, I wanted to say, have you checked out the new Killers album? The reason I mentioned that on this show, because you think, well, that's not really relevant, Johns. What are you talking about? There's a couple of tunes in there and I can't play them because of the copyright claim situation that I just talked about because <laughs> the killers are definitely going to have content ID on their songs. Uh, but I actually played a cover of, uh, of one of the songs on the, uh, the Happy Hour this week. So go check out the Happy Hour if you want to hear the cover of the new killer song. But a lot of the songs on that album, they rec they're not recorded that well. And I say that with all respect because the Killers are an amazing band and Brandon Flowers can afford to go into any studio in the world that he wants to and record. But he chose to record this very stripped down, very laid back acoustic guitar and vocal. And you can hear listening to it. Go, go listen to the album. It's called Pressure Machine. Go listen to Pressure Machine uh, on your streaming platform of choice and listen to a couple of songs in particular. There's one called something about horses uh, and there's one called uh, Terrible Thing. So listen to Terrible Thing in particular. I swear, it's him in an environment like this. That's what it sounds like. It's the sort of sound quality. Obviously, I don't have Brandon Flowers' voice or guitar playing ability, but it's, it's this sort of environment. That's what it sounds like, and it doesn't sound like he's recording on anything better than maybe like a Focusrite Scarlet or something like that into his Mac. I can imagine, I'm picturing the Logic tracks that he's just recording into uh, in his home studio because that's exactly what it sounds like. So um, it just proves, and that, those songs are super powerful. So to me, that proves that, you don't need the million dollar studio. Again, I say this a bunch, but uh, amazing song recorded on your phone is still an amazing song. Amazing song, uh, sorry, crappy song recorded in a million dollar studio, still a crappy song, right? Absolute. Uh, did I just agree with myself? All right. So, drum roll please, because our, uh, our plugin or app of the week is probably going to surprise you this week because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be this one. Oh. <laughs> That's really surprising me. It's going to be a blank screen. It's going to be the fact that my uh, iPad has stopped sharing. So we'll, we'll re-screen share my iPad here. Can't wait for iOS 15, by the way. Apparently, AirPlay is going to be built into Mac, which means I can AirPlay directly into my Mac without having to use Reflector or any other software, which could be a game changer. Because Reflector is good when it works until it doesn't. So uh, here we go. Drum roll, please. Here is uh, the, the app that we're looking for. It is uh, voice memos. What? Yeah, we're going to look at voice memos because I decided that I wanted to start exploring this a little bit more. Now, we're only going to look at the iOS version here, but the good news about voice memos is that if you have your stuff saved to your iCloud drive, which is one of the settings you can put in voice memos, it will actually share across all of your devices. So it'll share across your iPhone, it'll share across your iPad, and it'll share across your Mac. So... It's all there for you. It's all there, ready to go. And it's actually got some cool new features. The iOS 14 update, I kind of missed because I was a little bit sour because here's the, here's the history, by the way. But before we go into this, here's the history of this. There is an app called Music Memos. You may be aware of it. It's a cool app. It's been uh, relegated to the realms of never being updated again. If you've already downloaded it, you can keep using it. Oh, 
export your new recordings. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> I'll just, I'll do that later. Um, but yeah, you've got music memos here and I've done a whole bunch of videos on this. I'm too loud, man. You're too loud. All right. Sorry. Sorry, music memos. Music memos is really cool. It's like a voice memo app, but you can incorporate guitar and bass and then you can export it out to GarageBand and it does a lot of cool things. But the, uh, the voice memos app here has been updated and it's actually a pretty solid quality recorder. So this is a, I thought we'd go through here and I'll just show you a few things that we can do with this. So <clears throat> I just want to see if, uh, if because I'm, I'm using AirPlay here, which sometimes means that the recording doesn't work so well. So we'll, we'll record something in here quickly and see if we're actually getting it. So you open this up, it's the same on your iPhone or the iPad, it'll just be a different orientation. We're going to hit the record button. This is a recording in the voice remembers app I still miss. Music mammals, cause it's a bit better. But this one's not too bad. This one's not too bad. All right, we'll hit the pause button. So it's pretty cool here. We've hit pause there. We can resume this recording. But it's still not the best. And you can pause and resume it as many times as you want. And you get yourself a recording there. The live waveform live waveform's pretty cool in there. We can now scroll around. We can jump forward and backward by 15 minutes. So it's actually handy. If you're recording um, something, so say you're recording a speech or say you're recording a, a <coughs> concert, um, you can use something like this. I, I tend to use uh, Audio Share uh, because it just works better as an audio recorder. You can change the quality. You can do some other things in here. But in terms of something that's going to sync across all your different devices, this is pretty darn cool. All right, so we're done, uh, and it's called it New Recording 17. I just need to uh, come back over here, because the one thing that it does, on my iPhone, I don't think I have it set to do this on my iPad. No, I don't. That's cool. It's just going to call it New Recording 17. Uh, is it, it uses your address <laughs> a little bit creepily. On my iPhone, I record a new music memo, and it's, it's got the exact location of where I recorded it. Now, that's really cool, because sometimes I'll be out walking around, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is that idea that I recorded when I was down at the park, and this is that idea I recorded when I was at the cricket or the football or whatever. But um, yeah, it, it is. Uh, this uses new recording. So uh, if, if that creeps you out, you can turn off location settings, which clearly I've done here on the iPad. Excuse me a moment. Sorry, had a frog in my throat. You didn't need to hear me talking through that for the rest of the time. Um, yeah, and as Mark's saying here, it's not available anymore. The Music Memos app, it was free and could export directly to GarageBand. Now we can export to GarageBand from uh, from voice memos. And we're gonna go into that in a moment because I thought I'll show you a few, just a little few of the cool things that this can do. So number one is that we can go to edit. So we can just play it straight from here. So let's just, in fact, before we play back, I'm gonna plug in through my audio interface just so that we can hear the audio in the proper quality as you would hear it coming out of your device. Obviously you can use headphones or you can use the built-in speakers or you can use whatever you like. Uh, all right, we'll plug that in. Is this gonna work now? It's, it's turned itself on. The voice remembers that. There you go. It, it took a little while to get in there. So we'll hit the play button here. This is a recording in. The voice remembers app I still miss. <laughs> it's like a bit of a blues breakdown. Um, and here's some cool things that we can do. So if we go to the edit, so we'll tap, we'll bring back here so you can see what I'm tapping on. We'll tap edit here in the top right corner. We can do a few things in here. So the first thing we can do, you'll notice, is we can replace. So this bit here that I did, the voice remembers app I still miss. So I said voice remembers, voice remembers. So let's, let's see if we can re-record this part. The voice memos app that I still miss. You know the problem? <laughs> I've now plugged it over here and I don't have a microphone in my audio interface. So it's not going to do that. Imagine that instead of replacing it with silence, it replaced it with uh, the actual audio because now... Putting in. <laughs> There you go. Music mammals, cause it. Yeah, and as DJ Normal Norman says, the voice record is free and has a very good EQ. Yeah, voice record seven is another one that I use. Audio share is another one that I use. There's heaps of options, but there was a couple of things here in, in particular that I was interested with this one. So the other editing options that we have here, and this is good if you're just sort of doing something quick and on the fly and you want to share it across all your devices. You can uh, use this button up the top here. So click on this one. We can use this to trim. So say we only want this part here. We can trim it down to have that part and that part. And uh, if we go trim, we've now just got a small portion. All right. We'll hit the 
<laughs> but it's still not the best. <laughs> so we've just got that portion there. Uh, so we can save that one in and that will save those changes. We can then edit again. There's some other editing options here. If we wanted to delete out a section, we could actually use our start and end points to delete a section. As opposed to trim, we can delete as well. So if we wanted to just have this part, we can hit trim. But if we want to remove this part, in fact, we'll remove that part and that part up to there. Uh, boom. Then we can just trim, uh, delete it out here by doing that. So you can delete out chunks from the middle as well and then preview it. Music mammals cause it's a bit better, but this one's not too bad, but it's still... Yeah, so you can do that. Uh, we can then save that one in. So we've got ourselves there. The magic button here that you may have been noticing is this one up here. What does this do? Well, this is like our photo magic, what do they call that? Magic wand for your photos, the magic wand for your videos. This is your magic wand for your audio. And what it professes to do is do some noise reduction and do some reverberation reduction and make your, your voice just a little bit more crispy and cutty throughy. So let's see what it does. So let's play this little section first. Music mammals cause it's a bit better. But this one... So that's, there's our bit with a little bit of silence that I deliberately put in there. Let's hit this button and let's see what it does now. Music mammals cause it's a bit better. But this one's not too bad. But it's still not the best. So it's no Bruce Free. <laughs> But it does an okay, does a serviceable job actually doing that. What do you think? Uh, not too bad. So it does, of course, change the tone a bit. So if we turn it off again and you listen to the tone, it's doing some EQ there to, to remove that high end. So you get... Music mammals, cause it's a bit better. So you get a more nasally kind of sound if you listen. Music mammals, cause it's a bit better. Because it's cutting off the higher frequencies, you're not getting as many of those come through, which um, is okay. All right, so we're going to go done. So that's our, that's our new recording there, and that's a little bit there about music memos uh, that we can use. Uh, music memos. See, I made a mistake. Uh, voice memos. There you go. Um, Tom says, voice memo app is, uh, is solid. I use it even when music memos existed since I don't use the other features much. Good for sampling too. Yeah. And this is why I want to get into this and why I'm going to do some videos on voice memos during the week. Because in Songtember... I'm going to be grabbing voice memos and sampling some things. I'm going to create some instruments and create some, some sounds and some loops from what I hear in nature and what I'm here. Because I walk around a lot and I've always got my phone. And I've, uh, the, the built-in mic is going to be fine. I'm also going to experiment with my Shure MV88, which is a high-quality uh, lightning-based microphone. So I'm going to go out and start collecting sounds in September and seeing what I can incorporate in to a song. I did the same thing for a song called For the Birds a few years ago. I'm going to do the same thing here. So just getting those sounds, uh, just using voice memos may be cool because you, yeah, you can then directly access them across all of your devices, which is cool. All right, let's, um, let's put this to the test a little bit more here because that's all the things that we can do there. But let's go to this one here. <laughs> so this is called Laundry Test. And uh, when you listen to it, uh, you'll understand why. So this is a test recording in the laundry with the fan on and with someone taking a shower and I think the Simpsons are playing in the background. We pause for a minute there just to see what the ambient noise is. So this is a recording I did just before the show. So we could make sure that we can put... Because I, I really wanted to test out this noise reduction. Because sometimes you are recording a voice member. Maybe it's even just some lyric ideas. And then you come back to the studio and you're like, crap, the traffic noise. For anyone that's ever spoken to me while I'm out walking about, you know that there's always traffic noise. So if I capture something, what I want to hear is uh, some, some noise cancellation here of that. So let's see what this does. So again, here's the noise. So this is the test recording. So that's the noise that we're looking at here. Let's turn on the magic button, see what we get. So this is the test recording in the laundry with the fan on and with someone taking a shower and I think the Simpsons are playing in the background. We pause for a minute there just to see what the ambient noise is and see. There you go. So let's just, again, just so that you can hear what it's actually doing to this background noise, if we play it here, this is without the processing. And this is with the processing and see if this algorithm can actually do something. So it's not bad. It's not, yeah, as, as Mark says here, it's not too shabby. It does the job. Would you, is this really to use in your final project? Mm, probably not. Again, you'd probably use Bruce Free, but again, if you're just capturing some lyric ideas or you're capturing some sounds out there and you want a little bit of something, then it can do it all right. <laughs> X says, I can't do vocals until the kids go to bed. Uh, random dog poise scurrying around. Yeah, I hear you. 
I hear you indeed. Hello, Russ. How are you doing, mate? Uh, has, Russ is learning GarageBand at the moment, by the way. Uh, in fact, we'll talk about that. Uh, Russ mentioned um, uh, that he has uh, recently purchased the GarageBand Beginner's Guide. So you too can actually do that. In fact, I, didn't, I haven't done any sponsorship stuff here. I'm really bad at this job. It's not like a full-time job or something. Uh, but if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash courses, if you want to learn more about GarageBand, guess what? For just 10 bucks, you can give yourself a kick in the pants that you may need to learn because this guide has five hours of curated content. We go through what GarageBand is, how to start a new song, how to record your audio in, how to use loops, how to use the MIDI keyboards, how to use all that stuff, how to mix and master everything you need to get up and running and get your first song finished in GarageBand. So if you are interested in that, as Thomas Christ says, jump on over to that website, studiolivetoday.com slash courses. And it is Russ8889 approved. He is jumping in. He's promised me that he's jumping into GarageBand for his song, Timber Song. And uh, we will see what the great Russ can do with GarageBand iOS. All right. Now, <laughs> I've realized here that uh, my tip of the week was going to be uh, it was going to be the free audio enhancer, and it was going to be me showing you that. I didn't realize I was going to break that up. So what we showed there, what we showed with uh, with the voice memos, was everything. So instead, we're going to pivot here. We're going to pivot, and I'm going to instead do something that I've never actually done here and see how we can export something from here into GarageBand iOS because I've never tried this before, but apparently it's possible. So what we're going to do, we'll use this uh, new recording. Actually... This is a song I'm working on. And again, because I said before, I, I'm more than happy to use uh, to, to show you things that I'm doing. Let's just see what embarrassing bit of audio this is here. <laughs> Maybe not that one. I think this one's where I actually sing the chorus part. Because you have enough. No, it's not that one either. Um, maybe it's the, is this the actual song? I think this is the actual song that I did. Because it's all just this one's going to be better okay so we're going to use this one now the other options that you have in here you'll notice that we have a share button up the top here so i believe that what we can do is actually share this directly to GarageBand. never tried it let's try it here for the first time i love that my tip of the week is something that i've never actually done myself <laughs> so we're going to share there we are going to uh come across here can we find garage band is it a direct thing or do we need to uh do we need to save it first let's go to our more and see N knowing garage band it probably won't play super nicely and allow us to go direct as i'm doing this if anyone has done this before and knows that we can do it just feel free to let me know doesn't look like we can go directly into GarageBand. But what you can do is you can save it to your files. So what I would do with this is I would save to files. This is the workflow that I think is probably going to be best. You save to files and we're going to save it directly into my GarageBand file transfer folder. So I've talked about this before. If you're new to it, just search my name, Pete John's file transfer folder. You'll learn all about this. We'll save it straight in here. It's called work in progress. We'll save it into my GarageBand file transfer folder. Should be in there now. And now if we scroll up and go back over to GarageBand, we're going to create a new track. So we'll just go over here to my ideas folder. And we'll create a new song. And uh, we'll just go to the audio recorder so that we can access our loops icon. So go to track view and go to uh, loops, loop -be loop And it should be right there. And it is. So it exports it as an M4A file. So again, quality wise, we're not talking uncompressed way. This is why audio share probably still going to be my go to audio record. If I just want to record the best quality audio, because audio share, you can make sure it's 24 bit uncompressed wave and you can get the best possible recording sound. You can even adjust the input gain and things that you can't do with voice memos. So maybe for little ideas like this, I'll use voice memos. Probably not for my actual sampling, but let's grab this and bring this into a track like so. Now, there you go. Because I had automatic track length on here, it has filled it out. If you find that it only puts the first eight bars in, don't forget you need to come into your, uh, oh, into here, into the plus button here. Make sure that section is on automatic. If that says eight bars, put it to automatic or you can update that. Uh, Jalen Lay is saying, unfortunately, it's not letting you export direct to GarageBand at the moment. Okay, so we don't have a direct export. So this is the best thing we've got. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is that obviously this is free form and this is not recorded to a metronome. So if I wanted to actually line this up to a grid and use it in a project, I would need to actually do something like that. But it should have brought it in here. And because it's all just like in progress, nobody got to figure it out. It's all just like in progress. 
And the good thing is here that now that I can bring this in as a stereo track, I can start doing things to it. So if I just wanted this to be a, a basic kind of thing, we'll, we'll get rid of that uh, start there because I think that was just... Because it's all just like and what we want is, we'll see if, let's see if we can work out the, if, if I've got it on an actual beat. Because it's all. So that's the all. So that's where we want it to line up with a bar marking. So we'll do that to bar three. By the way, uh, a tip here, uh, because it's all. Uh, I was talking to Russ about, because he just started with GarageBand iOS, always give yourself two bars at the start. Russ was saying um, that when he's recording stuff, he's like, how do you change the lead in? Because when you've got GarageBand here, it only ever gives you a four bar count in. And that's not going to work if you're trying to record something straight away. So what I said to him is always give yourself two bars or even four bars at the very start so that you've got more of a lead in. And then when you're recording in the middle of a song, just start the recording from two or three bars earlier just to make sure you've got time to grab your keyboard, to grab your microphone, whatever you're doing with it. So there you go. So let's just see if we can um, we can get this tempo right because the tempo is actually going to be more like this because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out because we're all just... So it's about 82 BPM. Let's see how close to the mark that is. So uh, we just need to adjust this again. Let's see uh, if my guesstimation's on the mark. Because it's all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. So it's coming in just before there. So we need to shimmy that. And... It's all just a work in progress. Slightly too fast. So again, you wouldn't really ever need to do this again. It was only if you wanted to try and line it up. If you really want to do this sort of stuff, just record it to a metronome when you're doing that stuff. So we'll go. Because it's all just one Still slightly fast. So you can play around with all this stuff. It won't alter your audio. It's probably actually about 80, 80, 80 or 160. So you can do that sort of thing. And then of course you can add in other instruments and do things. But even if you just wanted to keep this as an acoustic demo, for instance, if I come, I can't remember what this song does now. Um, but if we come down here, we could uh, start, say, try to add some EQ and some reverb and some other things in here, just to sort of make the demo. If, if this was just going to be a demo song I wanted to send to someone, maybe I just want to sort of clean it up a bit. So let's just do some very basic mixing here in GarageBand with our voice recording record a track. <laughs> Maybe went a little bit nuts there with that. Just experimenting around with a few things. You wouldn't need it to be quite that much uh, reverb or echo. So we'll just turn those down quite a bit just to get that. But yeah, you can see what you can do here. And if I had any silences in here, which I did at the very start, I could even throw Bruce Free on here. So if we come back to the start here and make sure that... Because there's the... So what we could actually do... Still got way too much echo on there, don't we? You only need a very small amount of delay if you're using delay, but because we got the uh, because we got the tempo about right, it's it's going to work the delay correctly as well. So um, what was I doing? Uh, yeah, Bruce Free. So we could even if we wanted to try and reduce the noise, we could use the real noise reduction plugin, which is of course our Bruce Free from our friends at Clever Grand. So if we play this, because it's all just like him. So there you go. So it's it's definitely sounding better. If we come in here and we turn all the plugins and things off here, uh, so we'll just take everything off. We get, it's going to sound like this. Because it's all just one so it definitely sounds like a bedroom type recording. And look, it still will, but just adding a few little tweaks here, we can get it to. Nobody's 
I rolled off the low end a little bit too much. But there you go. It's a pretty simple thing to do to be able to bring something from our voice memos app here that we're working on, a work in progress, might you say, and bring it over here into GarageBand. So not too shabby, not too difficult to do to just share the audio out of there. Now, as far as I know, there is no way to import audio. I have checked and I have tried. There doesn't seem to be a way to actually import because we can um, we can save things here, we can uh, export things, we can record things, but we can't import things. And that's a bit of a pain because uh, the old music memos was actually quite cool because it had a function where you could go to your files app here and you could actually find files. So if we came out here, we could go to my iCloud drive and your music memos actually get stored in their own separate folder here. It seems to hide things here with the voice memos. It seems to hide them somewhere else. So we don't actually have access to actually get to them directly. So there you go. I just thought that was interesting to explore uh, the, the voice memos app in uh, iOS because I hadn't tried it again before. Uh, is, is the noise cancelling plugin you were showing earlier free? Yeah, so the one within voice memos is free. So that's just part of voice memos. That's 100% free. So you can use that uh, if you're here in voice memos uh, and you're using it here in iOS 14, as we did with our laundry test here. Just go to the edit button and turn on that little magic thing. As long as you're using iOS 14 or anything uh, higher than that, you will be good to go and you'll be able to do a little bit of basic noise reduction, which uh, again, is going to be handy if you're out and you've got background noise and you want to just record some ideas or get some stuff down into your uh, into your voice memos. Right, we are near the end here. Very few questions today, so we must have answered them all last week, or maybe because we're a day late, we've got a different crowd here. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bruce Free isn't free. So Bruce Free is about uh, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Definitely a worthwhile investment. Uh, if, if you do have noisy stuff and you want to reduce the noise, definitely worth actually checking that out out. Uh, the one I showed in GarageBand. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce, Pre, Bruce Free is Bruce Pay. They should name, we should rename it, shouldn't it? Yeah. Bruce Free, Bruce Pay. Yeah. No, that isn't free. If you do want, there is a couple of free options. I've showed them before. We'll finish with this because uh, then we'll, uh, we'll be done. If you desperately want free, look, just support Clevgran. They make amazing apps and it's not actually that much to buy and you'll use it again and again and again. You can use it with your, your audio for your videos. You can use it in GarageBand. You can use it as a standalone processor for files. It's actually bloody amazing. Um, so support support the, the creators that create this cool stuff. That being said, if you do want free, uh, if we go here, Pete Johns, there's a couple of options. They're not as good because they're free, but there's one from uh, our friends over at Nebrini, and it's called the Cleaner. So the, there's a Cleaner plugin, so that reduces a bit of the hiss and the rumble, more for guitars than for vocals, but it will work. So I have covered that before as well. And uh, there is also uh, the Noise Gate. So the Nembrini noise gate is good. Now a noise gate is different. This one here, free noise gate plugin. Nembrini noise gate. Noise gate's different. Bruce Free actually processes the entire audio file, meaning even when there is audio playing, it's trying to reduce the noise. What a noise gate does is it just cuts the noise or reduces the noise in the in-between parts so that you don't get that background hiss when there's nothing playing. And look, you can do that with automation or you can do that just by trimming and cutting the audio. But there are another couple of options. As you can see here, I say that Bruce Free is the best iPad or iPhone noise reduction app. And uh, I agree with me. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I need my vocals to cutty throughy more. I know, I'm, I'm totally releasing a, a plugin uh, called cutty throughy. Everyone will know it. Everyone will want that. They're like, oh man, this guitar is just not cutty throughy enough. And I'll be like, Do you, uh, is your guitar not cutty throughy? Download cutty throughy right now. I'll, I'll give you a preview of it, Jade. You can you can uh, premiere it on uh, how to app on iOS. We are done here. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining me a day late. Sorry that uh, there was the delay there, but uh, yeah, important stuff to get done. So I hope you are all doing well in your various parts of the world. I know there's some schnizzle going on around the place, and it's not so much fun. I do want to uh, I do want to direct you here, and that is to this this web page. So this is studiolivetoday.com slash garageband, and I'm working on changing this. So at the moment, it's the GarageBand iOS FAQ. It's going to become the GarageBand FAQ, because I want to actually, I don't know which way to go, whether I just leave this one as GarageBand and then maybe do a separate one for Mac eventually, but at the moment, very much focused on iOS. At the very top there, you can uh, grab the beginner's guide and kickstart your learning journey. Uh, you can... Uh, check these links. So these are good ones for starting out with GarageBand. Some bunch of playlists there, how to get things done. And then I've got a Q&A here. 
So we go through 24-bit audio, audio interface, audio unit plugins, AUV3, automation. It's all there in alphabetical order. So you can search through there or you can just you know, pick and choose. And each one has the question, the answer, and a video that shows you how. So there you go. If you're uh, if you don't want to if you don't want to pay the ten bucks, <laughs> come to this page. Sorry, now that Russ has bought it, he's like bloody hell, Pete. You told me could have told me I could just come here and get it all for free. Well, kind of Russ, but the the course guides you through this. So the course is five hours, and uh, it has all of this uh, combined in one spot. But if you go to studiolive.today.com/garageband, you can jump in there and check out the FAQ. Now I've realised I've forgotten to do one thing, and you know what that one thing is? Why it's uh, it's actually completing the survey. So let's end the poll. Uh, we've had 50 votes, which seems like a logical place to end it. So we've had 50 votes in the poll. So we are going to, uh, we're going to end that one. Uh, and uh, as I've said to Russ as well, the, the good news for him is that if his, if, if his song turns out great, he can be like, thanks, Pete, that was great. If his song turns out crap, he can say, it's all Johnson's fault. And he can completely blame me because he can say, it's your bloody course that caused it to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've ended the poll there. And uh, can we have a drum roll, please? Because the final results are in. And uh, we have iPad is the winner. 56% primarily use on the iPad, which is pretty expected. 20% use on Mac. 18% use on iPhone. And 5% don't use GarageBand. Thanks for being here. I, I do appreciate that, that there's two of you that are here that are like, don't use GarageBand, but I'm going to come and watch anyway, Johns. I'm like, yeah, nice. Good to have you here. Uh, but thank you. No, and as I say, if you're GarageBand curious, maybe watching this show is just what you need to sort of go, ah, you know what? I am sick of Pro Tools. I am sick of insert name of app. I do want something that's just simple that can just get the job done. So again, because it's free, if you've got an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac, you might as well try it out. Just see. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. If it does, it does. That's cool. Uh, and uh, Mark's saying the iPad and Mac are uh, evenly. Yeah, I didn't put an even because I wanted people to make a call. <laughs> I wanted to do that thing. I used to work in uh, customer experience and whenever they had a survey uh, where they're like, um, oh, we want to have that five-point scale where the middle ones uh, neither agree or disagree, I'd be like, no, it has to be slightly agree or slightly disagree. No one actually really sits on the fence about things. Everyone needs to go one way or the other. So I always used to be the muckraker that would get in there and say, no, got to make them choose yes or no, black or white, which is weird because now I love gray areas and I love sitting on the fence. Go figure. The best standards are double standards. All right. What have we got coming up, folks? Well, that's kind of the end of the week. We've got a couple of days off, but don't forget on Thursday night, or what is Thursday morning for, for many of you folks, we have the uh, we have the Creator Town Hall. I think it's episode 23. I better find it in here. The Michael Jordan edition. No, we're up to 24. So here it is. So scheduled there. So what you can do, I will uh, I will jump in here. I'll grab I'll grab a link to this one. We'll copy the link. Not the image. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this copy link address. Uh, I'll put this here for anyone that's watching anywhere so that you can uh, set yourself a reminder for this one. I'll be solo this week. Uh, I had Sarah on the channel last week, which was a lot of fun. I'll be going solo this week, so you can jump into that one. Uh, I've got a little preview there of, of, uh, of a little video of how to use um, how to do some stereo widening. If you want to go check that one out. But you can go there, you can set the reminder, and that will tell you. There you go. I'll set my own reminder when that's going to be in a couple of days' time. We also, straight after that, uh, I forgot what it's called, but we'll go to Creative Source because I'm sure he set it up over here on his channel. Mike the Man Enyo over at Creative Source, um, he has got a show called Featured Artist Live. Oh, it's not going to show up here because it's a it's a it's a live thing. Hang on, uh, we'll see Creative Source Featured Artists Live. Hopefully, it's got number five. There it is, live number five. And uh, yes, that's yours truly that's going to be on there. So Thursday morning, set your calendars, mark your schedules, because uh, I will be live at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Adelaide time, which is, as I said, very early morning for the folks in the West Coast, slightly less early for those in the East Coast, and it's about midday for those in uh, the UK and Europe. So this is your chance, folks, in the UK and Europe to, uh, to join in. And then I'll be there with uh, the Lonely Rocker, who's a cool dude out of Canada. By the way, if you if you haven't checked that one out and you want to know about him before you do this, come over to Dan's channel here, Lonely Rocker. He's Canadian, which means he's extra cool. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to Dan. I'll throw him in there as well. Boom. 
And uh, yeah, you can check out all of his videos. He's got cool stuff, does a lot of cool stuff about acoustic panels and sound, uh, sound dampening, and also a lot of guitar-based stuff and uh, gear-based videos as well. So he's a great channel to go and check out as well. So myself, Dan, and Mike will be chatting uh, about featured artists live. It's a bit like YML, if you're wondering what the show's about, uh, but we only do a few songs and we deep dive into them and we go a little bit, uh, get a little bit more detail. So that is what I'll be doing for the rest of the week. But until then, then, oh, I'm having a couple of days off, <laughs> so I'm going to relax. I'm, well, when I say relax, I'm going to be uh, playing around with GarageBand, playing around with voice memos, getting ready, because guess what? Song Temper is one week away. This time next week in GarageBand Weekly, we'll be sitting down and I'll be saying, tomorrow is the day that Song Temper commences. So... I hope you will join me for that. Thanks, everyone, for being here on the show. Uh, and uh, re- go over to studiolivetoday.com if you want to find all the ways that you can interact with the channel and you can get in touch with me. Big shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And thank you for choosing to support me uh, over at patreon.com slash Johns. Until next time, folks, please be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Keep creating. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Should we go out with GarageBand Weekly? Yeah, let's go out with some Kronk song here. I'll dance along to GarageBand Weekly. See you next time. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Oh, goodbye.